Hello, I'm Terry David Mulligan. This is Mulligan Stew, the podcast. Thank you for listening on either Spotify or Google Play Music or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, please subscribe. I don't know where I was when I first heard September Fields, Frazy Ford's first single from her amazing album, Indian Ocean. We knew her being a member of Be Good Tanya's. They were a folk group, no two ways about it. Who knew that Frazy Ford had always wanted to go to Memphis, Tennessee, to the high studios and work with the same musicians that Al Green did and capture that sound. We had no way of knowing that this was her dream until you heard her sing September Fields, an amazing song. And the band did exactly what the band always did, just filled in the riffs. They all just ad-libbed their way through this incredible song. And Frazee Ford did the vocal of her life. Well, people were listening. She picked up fans all over the world. And here's what's happened to Frazee Ford since. First of all, she has a whole new world in front of her and audiences all over the world. Secondly, she has signed to the Canadian label Arts and Crafts, one of the best in the business. She is about to release her third studio album. Not quite sure when that new album will be coming, but we'll be standing in line waiting with the microphone in hand. Just for your information, Frazee Ford plays Rock on the Shores in Victoria on Vancouver Island, Sunday, July 15th. And the Wide Skies Music Festival in Lethbridge, August 1st. Please enjoy this conversation with Frazee Ford. Hey, it's Frazee Ford. Hi. You and I met at Memphis Blues uh, Barbecue a couple of years ago, and we talked about September Fields. Yeah, yeah. And we uh, ate some things that were yummy. Yeah. Some ribs. Everything there is yummy. Um, how was the journey? Of Indian Ocean? Yes. Yeah, it was um, intense and amazing. It was. We went all over the world m- multiple times. We were at Holland and Germany and Sweden and Australia and the UK and the States and Canada. And, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was wonderful. I mean, it was a lot of back and forth, but we had a great time kind of putting that album uh, in different places and different festivals. And you talked then about this, the surprise, the delight of, uh, of, you know, writing tunes on your living room couch, for example, mm-hmm. or the porch or whatever. And all of a sudden, that same song and that music has taken you to Australia. Yeah. Yeah. And then sometimes you're just in these like massive halls with people and they know the words and, and it just (laughs) takes on this wild existence unto itself. And then you're like, wow, that was such an internal process that becomes this very external thing. When Um, they, when they sing the words back to you, mm -hmm. it must be joyous. It is pretty sweet. We we played a show in Auckland, New Zealand last fall, and there was a whole row of women at the front who'd flown from some other island, and they knew the words to all the songs, and it was really just so sweet. It was it was just a wild thing. These things. Uh, one of the things you said, I went back and listened to the interview that you and I did, and a conversation, and you made a mention. Oh, I, I made a note of it here. Um, I I said. Uh, how has it changed you? Are you different? And you said, yes, I am a different singer-songwriter because of uh, Indian Ocean. Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what I'm going to be like on the next uh, mm-hmm. album. So here we are at, yeah. the, at just the tip of the iceberg. But uh, how, how are you? What's different? Um, yeah, I think like there's this thing where you you write an album and you you and then you go embody that work you know a lot and then i took a i took a good chunk of time like 8 months and didn't do much music i did uh i made a lot of clothes and um painted and just kind of you know calmed myself down <laughs> after all that and then i kind of just wait until i get the urge to write again or i, I get a strong urge toward music and yeah it's been about a year now that i've been um writing this next album and uh, it's hard to describe what's different but there is this you're a different person you've you've uh i mean i find like when you're working on a body of work 
it, you just kind of step back and watch, and you're like, what is what is it now that kind of wants to come through? And it is different. It's a different the the person that lives through those experiences that that wrote Indian Ocean. I'm in a different place in my life. I've experienced different things. I think differently. I don't know. It's it's hard to explain. Like you'll probably hear it when you hmm. hear the next album. But there's a, a different energy that I don't like to redo what I already did. And then, so I I really do feel like there's a process of kind of ego death and forgetting about who you are and just kind of letting go of, especially when you do a thing that people write about and they have opinions about and, and you can't, you kind of have to let all of that go and forget about who you are in a way before you sort of start. You're not, you're not going to write for them. You're going to write for you. Exactly. And, and I think there's this thing about doing an art form in a professional way where, um, um, you have to, um, I think part of why I go do other things like painting and, um, you know, any kind of almost any other creative thing because it's, it, be, it becomes private again. It's just for me again. It's just um, there's, those creative choices are, are very private again. And that, that's something I need to get back to so yeah. I'm not caught yeah. in the idea of are people going to like this or not. I don't like to think about that when I'm writing.
Let's take, for example, let's take them one at a time. You have two pieces of music out there right now. It's mm-hmm. called pieces of music. There's two, you have two songs out there right now. When We Get By, mm-hmm. uh, uh, D'Angelo's When We Get By. Yeah. How, how long have you, how long, how long has that earworm been working on you? Quite a while. I mean, I like we kind of bumped into his band a couple times on the road, and we ended up really listening to his uh, Black Messiah a lot. Like we listened to it before we got on stage. And um, and then we and then it, that song was kind of born on stage in Paris. We're like, let's try to do a version of one of his songs that's like very very different. And it kind of came out of this sort of smoky slow thing. Mm-hmm. And both of these songs we've been performing live, and I feel like these songs are both a part of the process of the next album, like sort of things that I'm thinking about as I'm kind of thinking about moving into whatever the next thing is. Produced by John Graham. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Uh, you surround yourself with your local musicians, the, mm-hmm. guy, the guys you've always been with. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, they this group in particular uh, toured with me all of Indian Ocean. So, and Darren, my bass player, he's he's been with me um, since 2010, since Obadiah. So wonderful. Yeah. All right, uh, can you get to that? Yeah. Uh, uh, how long has that song been around, that Funkadelic song? Um, like, I I just have a, this very intense memory of years ago when I tree-planted, listening to that album, like, in the hot sun, and, you know, I was, like, maybe, like, 20 or something, and just being out on a mountainside, and that song kind of stuck with me. And then, um, I don't know why Funkadelic just popped back up in my brain, but I just was like, we should... You know, yet again, kind of, I like to take a song that's really outside of my own genre and, and reinterpret it. And then coincidentally, a couple of days after we released the track, um, we were in San Francisco and Funkadelic happened to be playing the same club as us a couple of days later. So just recently, I got to see George Clinton and Funkadelic and hang out with their band. And <laughs> it was just like this weird synchronicity again. It's sort of whenever I'm really thinking about and artists, because the same thing happened with D'Angelo, and I started really thinking about his album. He happened to be playing the same venue as us, and we got to meet his well. Anyway, it was just one of those weird, like, synchronicities. Arts and crafts, uh, and you have gotten together. What's it like? Uh, what, the, the, is, that, is that a great fit for you and the label? I think so. I really like their taste, and um, I'm pretty good friends with Dan Mangan. Um, he just lived down the road, and I was one of him as kids, and... And he's been on that label for a while, and he's really happy with them. And um, But, you know, I've only released these two tracks with them, so I haven't had a ton of, um, uh, it, like, interaction with them. So, well, 
you know, when the new album comes out, it's kind of like when I'll really get to know the team and everything like that. But I, I like them, and they're they're quite forward thinking, and um, I I really respect their taste, like their artistic taste. So I think that's yeah. And people people pay attention to the releases on Arts mm-hmm. and Crafts. They do. Mm-hmm. They re, even if they've never heard of them. Yeah. They, you want to know why they signed them and who the artist is. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Um, I'm looking at your dates, uh, Fraser. You're uh, you're going to have an interesting song. June the 26th. Uh, so this is the this is the 23rd, by the way. Um, so uh, let me see. In a couple of days, you're in Seattle. Yep. They like you there, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Uh, now tell me about uh, July the 7th, the Catalano Street Party, mm-hmm. um, headlining with uh, Slow. Oh wow. And Biff. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever see Slow in their uh, initial? No, no. Great band. Okay, I will have to check them out. Great band, just a great band. Um, uh, first band I ever saw hang their microphones from the ceiling. Oh wow, amazing! And Biff naked. Do you know Biff? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, he's great. So that's your street party in Kislano, Saturday, July the seventh, and then mm-hmm. the next Saturday, the fifteenth, um, or whatever, uh, Sunday the fifteenth, uh, Rock the Shores. In uh, uh, Parks and Rec uh, at West Shore in Victoria. Yeah. Yeah, it was Brian Wilson <laughs> and Bob. I think. <laughs> Come on. I know, that's going to be a fun one, too. Uh, what else? Have? Oh, yeah, August the 1st, the Wide Skies Music and Arts Festival in Lethbridge. Yeah. Now, uh, so uh, do you festival differently? What do you do for festivals? Same same set? Um. It's always different because it's always a shorter set. It's like an hour versus an hour and a half or mm-hmm. whatever. And then it's outdoors, so just depending on the timing of the set, you know, uh, I think club and theater, you tend to, you can play a lot more slow stuff, but festival stuff, we it's not as much slow stuff. So. Shall we assume that you're going to have a band with you from here on in? Oh, yeah. Okay. I, um, I pretty much don't play without a band. Yeah. Are you going to continue to write and record uh, during all of these dates? Where yeah. are you, where are you with, in terms of the new album? Yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to write a lot and record a lot, and just kind of go into the process with it. Um, I have recording dates set up all summer, so you know, from my perspective, this is like a very tiny amount of shows that I'm doing because normally I'd be on the road uh, doing lots of shows. Um, but we've specifically left a lot of space and time to, um, for me to write and to be in the studio. So, um, yeah, we've, I've been in the studio twice, a few sessions, and I'm just, you know, writing a lot and working with the band. And I never know, like, I, I'm not a very linear thinker, and, I, and I'm, I'm really kind of a perfectionist, so I just keep going until I'm happy with it. And there's stuff that I'll record and I won't use, and... There's a lot of stuff that I write and I won't use. So I just kind of wait until sort of things seem to, till they really strike me as the right thing. Will uh, will, yeah. will Wimby get by and can you get to that? Will they be on the album? No, no. Those are kind of just, those are just stuff I was thinking about. And um, no, it'll, it'll be mostly just uh, like those are also covers. So it's mostly original stuff. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, so we should we should set our body clocks for what next year? Um, I'm hoping to finish the recording sometime in the fall, and then depending on when the record label decides it's time to release it, you know. So, but you know they do that thing now where it's potentially they'll release a single or two. Yes, exactly. Kind of. So I don't know. I'm sort of feeling like like early winter is when maybe the first single or kind of late fall. Well, Pierre, it just sort of depends on where, it, like, just where it kind of lands. But yeah, is working it, hard at it. <laughs> hey, Frazy, is it possible to? Uh, it's too broad a st- stroke, I understand. But is it possible to define who it is that is attracted by your music? Who, could, I mean, I know I know it's a sea of faces, but is there a, a sort of a general sense of who they are? Mm, it's really diverse, which is something I really enjoy. I get like. I get young people who are just kind of discovering the whole 70s folk thing, or I get um, a lot of older people for whom they really were in touch with, like the Emmylou Harris or the Al Green or, or you know, that's yeah. that 
that scene and and then kind of you know everything in between which is i really like that i like i i really value that i have um older uh, older demographic and younger demographics i get i get people saying oh my dad turned me on to your music or my son turned me on to your music so i kind of i love that there's kind of a a few generations happening but it really varies <laughs> depends you? on the country too like of course depends on who sort of you know what radio stations they were, were they were hearing it on interest in uh, a Be Good Tanya's reunion at some point? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think that's in the cards. I mean, I definitely feel like at some point I will return to um, a country thing. You know, my mom is this like pretty great singer and oh, yeah. 
I keep thinking that her and I should put something out because that sound, that Bigatani sound, for me was really related to how I grew up singing. And for me, the source of that is like my mom. So I consider going back in that direction at some point, but I don't think so. I think we, you know, we put out those three albums. We're, yeah, like I still see them and stuff, but that was like a solid, you know, 12 years that we did that project. So I am um, speaking to mom and home. I mm-hmm. went back to I uh, went to your Facebook page and I saw that uh, families belong together uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, um, movement. I mean, as you and I talk on this very day, there are the headlines are all about families being torn apart yeah. uh, at the border. I mean, I've never thought I'd see anything like this, and it's and I'm kind of wondering if it wants to show itself in, in, in a song or if you've written something or, mm-hmm. and, and more importantly, I did a whole series of interviews about where is today's protest song? Uh-huh, it, it, uh-huh. T- it took quite a while to get rolling, but I think we're starting to see uh, signs of that now. Mm-hmm. I, I think about that, but I'm just not the type of writer who, like I don't sit down and decide what I'm going to write about. It just, I kind of, my process is really like intuitive and I think that political songs are very tricky because the ones that really hit you are written kind of from personal experience. Right. So I always feel like it's a rare, it's a very rare art to be able to effectively um, write. And I know a few people that can do it. Um, I just I don't consider myself one of those people. There's one political song that I've written that I feel good about, um, but I think. I would like to see more of that, but it's it's a it's a tricky art because you know when you're thinking about politics, you're kind of in your head, and I really feel like it has to kind of come from the heart. So I, I but I would say I was so upset the day because there was a really delayed reaction to to that issue, and normally like all the artists that I know or various people that I follow as well, they'll they'll really post and be very vocal about specific issues but nobody it just seemed like there was a silence on that one and so when I said it I was really disturbed by not only what was happening but by the lack of reaction that's what I felt but now oh yeah all the artists I know are posting about it and it's become like within it just became very fun and I think um you know protest songs are not protest songs like I will I hope somebody writes some good protest songs but I think also artists um, being willing to speak about issues is, is very important because they're sort of helping to set the cultural tone of like that it's important to care and to voice your opinion and all that. But yeah, I I I do think there could be some better protest songs. I just have never really been good at articulating that in a way that feels effective. Well, you never know. You never know. You never I was know. thinking about it. I was so <laughs> upset only that day that I just was like thinking about it. But yeah, it's true. There needs to be more. All right, we'll leave you well actually we'll leave you with one song. Um do you want to go back to September Fields and Sure. September Fields, uh from Indian Ocean. And um it's Frazy Ford who's coming your way. And by the way, if you're in Lethbridge, August the first, Wide Skies Music Festival, if you're in Vancouver, Katsalano uh, Saturday, September the 7th in Victoria, Jul- uh, Saturday, July the 7th, and in uh, Victoria, Sunday, July the 15th, rocking the shores. Have a great summer. Thank you. You too. Get on.
Terry David Mulligan, thank you for listening to Mulligan's Do the Podcast. Her name is Frazee Ford, and she is a very special artist. Uh, just a reminder that Frazee Ford will be uh, performing Saturday, July the 7th at the Catalano Street Party in Vancouver. Rockin' the Shores, July the 15th, or Sunday, at the uh, West Shore Parks and Recreation in Victoria. And August the 1st at the Wide Skies Music and Arts Festival in Lethbridge, Alberta. She's Frazee Ford. I'm Terry David Mulligan. Thank you for listening.